Here I am standing in the heart of Salinas Valley, California. Salinas Valley grows over 70% of the entire nation's lettuce and leafy greens. From there, it feeds the Californians, it feeds the rest of the country, and we even export to other countries. So how did agriculture get to become like this? Just a hundred years ago, uh, the majority of Americans, about 90% of them, were farmers. So how do we become so industrialized? Well, in World War I, the Germans developed what's called the Haber-Bosch process. And this was a very significant uh, discovery for the history of agriculture because it uh, converted nitrogen from the air into a liquid form. So originally, apparently it was supposed to be used to uh, create explosives for the war, but it wasn't long after that farmers started using it in the soils because nitrogen is a very sought after nutrient for plants to grow. It's one of the three essential macronutrients and it's very hard to come by organically. So what this Haber-Bosch process did was it took the nitrogen that is already in the air, which the air has about 78% nitrogen, but unfortunately the plants can't absorb nitrogen from the air to grow. So plants can only absorb nitrogen that is in nitrate form. So what this Haber-Bosch process did was it took the nitrogen from the air and it combined it with hydrogen to make ammonia. Now when you put ammonia into the soil, that gets quickly converted into nitrates so plants can absorb those nutrients right away. So since then we have been a very chemically driven society and we still are. Now the problem with that is that we usually don't see the adverse effects of these chemicals until it's too late. So we are starting to see this with these nitrogen rich fertilizers today as well as many other chemicals that are being used in commercial agriculture. On one hand, whenever you use chemicals in the soil, uh, whatever isn't absorbed by the plants washes out of the soil and ends up in our waterways. Now once those waterways make it into bodies of water such as lakes, rivers, oceans, uh, they create these algae blooms which actually starve the fish of oxygen. So the fish are dying. On the other hand, uh, farmers aren't really seeing those same results as they used to uh, when they used to use those chemicals uh, decades ago. This is because the soil is being depleted of organic matter. And uh, organic matter in soil is very essential because you know, the soil is a living, breathing thing, and when you replace it, when you take its nutrients, you need to replace it. The most common way for replacing this organic matter back into soil has been composting, and composting has been uh, used for centuries. This does a pretty adequate job at replacing that organic matter, but it also has some of its problems. So not only is compost, uh, does it take a very, very long time to break down in the soil for the plants to be able to absorb the nutrients, but it requires a lot of real estate, it requires a lot of labor to maintain, and uh, oftentimes it can also have problems with pathogens, which is a pretty scary thought when thinking about uh, the fact that it's being used to grow the food that we eat. However, there is a solution to this whole chemical mess that we're having, and that solution is organic agriculture. Organic agriculture has really been on the come up, especially over the last few years, and this is because not only are the consumers demanding it, but it's because our soils literally need it. So although it has become pretty popular, unfortunately it is still not uh, very significant. Uh, to put it in perspective, only about 1% of all agriculture grown in the US is organic, while the other 99% is all conventional. So why aren't these conventional farmers making the switch? Well, growing organically just so happens to be a very difficult process. Not only are you not allowed to use any pesticides, any chemicals, or any other synthetic nutrients to grow your food, but Organic fertilizers can be kind of a hassle to deal with. This is because your average organic fertilizer is a blend of organic materials. And once you put that stuff in the soil, it takes a long time for your soil microbes to work to digest those nutrients, to put them in a simple form for the plants to be able to absorb them. So this is why a lot of the conventional farmers don't really bother to make that switch because they're used to putting their chemicals in the soil and seeing results within a day, sometimes even in a few hours. So our fish are dying, the water is really scarce, our soils are in desperate need of organic matter and microbial activity, and traditional organic fertilizers are just too slow. So where exactly do we go from here? Well, this facility behind me has the answer to this problem. AgroThrive has been able to create the world's first fast-acting organic fertilizer. 
This fertilizer is made by taking the inedibles from food processing operations that would usually otherwise end up in landfills and pollute our environment. AgroThrive has uh, developed a technology that is able to break down those materials and put them in a simpler form where plants can absorb them. So once that fertilizer is applied to the soil, uh, those nutrients are immediately available to the plants and results can be seen in less than a week. Unlike conventional fertilizers, nutrients that aren't immediately absorbed by the plant are stored in the soil for future harvests. There are two primary modes of action when using this fertilizer. The first one is root stimulation. So not only does it really ignite that root growth, but it also increases the number of root hairs on the surface of the roots. So this is important because an increase in roots and root hairs means more surface area for the plant to absorb nutrients and water. This also means that farmers are able to use much less water when they're growing organically. This is because a buildup of organic matter in soil shows to have much better water retention than a soil with little microbial activity. The second mode of action for the fertilizer is plant protection. So not only do the beneficial microbes colonize the uh, surface of the plant and the plant roots, but it also infiltrates the inside of the plant. So any plant that is oozing with uh, beneficial microbes is much less susceptible to fall victim to any type of environmental stressors. Whereas a plant with little microbial activity in it, such as one grown under chemicals, is gonna be much more stressed and much more susceptible for any type of disease or pathogen that wants to get into it. So say a pest gets into one of these stressed plants, then you're gonna go have to break out the pesticide that pesticide might kill one pest in the food chain, which is going to introduce another one. Then you're going to have to go find a different pesticide to solve that issue. And you can see how the uh, vicious cycle of chemicals really continues there. Whereas if you simply feed your soil and feed the beneficial microbes in your soil, you won't run into these problems. So here we have it. Finally, we have an organic fertilizer that is fast acting, delivers all the nutrients a plant needs organically, improves disease resistance, reduces water use, and doesn't leach any nutrients into our waterways. Plus, this whole entire facility is operated off of 2.5 acres of solar panels right here in California. Thanks for watching and visit us at www.agrothrive.com for more information.